topics that you wanted to talk about that we didn't get a chance to address necessarily? No, not really. I, I think, um, yeah, it was super fun. I, I, I think, you know, like the one thing that we're working on right now with Teller, um, you know, we're, we're making another big upgrade here over the next month. So we're throwing away in, in the past, you know, I know you had talked about like things that we've learned over the years. And in the past, we, we did have like ways to, to upgrade the protocol via. So we had we have a DAO for voting on these things and we're formally getting rid of the DAO. <laughs> um, we're the only thing that Teller, the only voting on anything will be is for for those disputes. And it'll be sort of specific by chain. Um and the reason for that is, you know, like we, we've tried to, how can we be as decentralized as possible? And you, knowing that DAO structures are really hard to work and that they're, they actually just introduce risks. Um, the way that we ultimately want it to work is, you know, you have a polygon system. And if if the polygon system breaks, the, the mainnet users actually don't care. And if if the mainnet users system breaks, like the polygon users are, are okay. And same with like e- even more down to a granular level, if if you're if you want the ETH price on Polygon and somebody else wants the Bitcoin price on Polygon, everybody's incentivized to help each other. But if somebody breaks the ETH price, it doesn't break your Bitcoin price. It still works. And and the reason is is you know like with oracles, that there's nothing sort of preventing somebody from saying like like you you and I like on the Bitcoin price contract, like we could easily start a contract that says like let's place $10 billion into this pool, this betting pool that settles on the Teller Oracle price. Well, like, I'll be the first to say that if you put $10,000 into a pool settling on a Teller Oracle price, like, somebody will break our protocol for that $10 billion. (laughs) Like, we are not secure up to that amount. And there's nothing that we as a protocol could do to prevent somebody from making that contract. Um, The only thing that we can do is make sure that if somebody makes that really dangerous contract, it doesn't sort of trash the whole system. It just breaks this one specific vote, somebody can run away with those $10 billion and then leave our system alone. Um, so we're trying to think about that, you know, like if somebody is going to attack it, how do you sort of minimize these risk damages and make it as hard to attack, obviously, at the same time?